VGK faces an improved Ottawa Senators team tonight. Should VGK be concerned with its offensive production? And after the first month of this season, we've got contenders and pretenders in the Honda Pacific Division. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. I'm Tony Cardasco, along with the guy through Honda. I'm Tony Cardasco, along with Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your top choice, your first listen each and every day. Find us on Twitter, Locked On VGK. I am at Tony Dasco. He is at TD Chris G. And of course, you could find us on the YouTube channel. And we invite you to subscribe, Locked On VGK. So, uh, Chris, the Golden Knights face an Ottawa team tonight that we know is a very much improved team. Uh, they come off of a very tough 4-3 to three loss in Tampa a couple of nights ago. VGK rolling in with a five-game win streak, which matches uh, last year's best output. There's hope in the Canadian capital for the Senators. A lot of optimism that stems from the acquisitions of three players. So you've got Claude Giroux. He came over from the Flyers now has 930 points in the league, including seven this season. And uh, again, you have uh, Alex DeBrinkett, who was traded from Chicago, your team, to Ottawa. And uh, he's averaged about 32 points per season since he's been in the league. And of course, he is Patrick Kane's bestie who got traded and he was really bummed out. And you've got Cam Talbot, Cam Talbot, uh, who will be chipping in later on in the crease for Ottawa. Talbot is out still with the upper body injury. It's a rib injury. He sustained in camp. Uh, they say he could be back as early as Saturday against the Flyers. Um, started back a week ago. Last season, 32 wins, 12 losses, four, uh, he, and of course, four OT games. They expected to share time with Philip Forsberg. But uh, let's talk about this Ottawa Senators team that is much improved. And VGK comes in tonight, and you know that Ottawa will be fired up, I think, to welcome the Golden Knights. No doubt. And um, first thing we look at, folks, you know, we're, we're in Vegas here, so we got to talk money and sports betting for a second. I'm nervous about this game, folks. We, I've mentioned a few different times in tweets and stuff like that, the American public is usually not right when it comes to picking a side in sports, in, in sports wagers. If they were, you wouldn't see these nice and glitzy and glamorous sports books and all these wonderful billion dollar properties up and down Las Vegas Boulevard. And then obviously all the sports books across the country. Now, this is a relatively short line, folks. Vegas is minus 135, minus 140. Ottawa is plus 115, plus 120. But the American public right now, according to um, covers.com, it's about a 65, 35 split in favor of the VGK. Spots like this, folks, when I'm making my sports my sports bets, I love a close line where the public is heavily on the other side right now. So I'm a little nervous about the Vegas Golden Knights tonight. I am not going to lie, just simply based on the numbers and uh, the wagering side of things. Now, looking at the game, just looking at uh, some of their top performers, uh, I was curious how Alex Dabrinkit was doing from the Chicago Blackhawks, of course. And he's sitting on two goals, six assists, eight points, nine games, basically a, a point-ish per game clip. Um, Brady Kachuk, fantastic season, 12 points. Uh, Drake Batherson, same thing, 11 points. Claude Giroux, seven points right now. And then, you know, you got you got Stutzel, you got Shabbat, you got some younger players. Uh, Shane Pinto has certainly come on as well in place of uh, Josh Norris, who unfortunately went down with an injury. So this is not, um, you know, this, this is the version of the Atlantic that the Pacific is going to become in the next maybe two, three, four years right now. All the teams in the Atlantic made some major changes trying to be competitive once they saw the Detroit Red Wings just friggin' loading up uh, over the summer and stuff like that. Ottawa made some big moves as well, and obviously you're trying to compete with uh, you know the big boys being uh, Florida, 
Tampa, Toronto, and Boston. So Ottawa is trying to find their way right now. And Tony, like you said, yes, they're going to be ready to welcome what is right now the, you know, the, the co-hottest team in the league, along with the Boston Bruins, another team that the Ottawa Senators uh, see plenty of. Yeah, and Ottawa did defeat. They've got big wins over the Bruins. They beat the Stars of uh, Peter DeBoer, who's still upset about being canned from Las Vegas. And uh, they've also lost uh, the last three, I think, the Wild, the Panthers, and that physical game a couple of nights ago against the Lightning. Uh, let's talk about goalkeeping. Who will be between the Nets uh, here tonight for VGK and for Ottawa? Again, uh, Forsberg. Uh, seems as though he'll start again. He has started. Uh, he started eight games this season. He's three and five. And then uh, they traded for. Uh, they picked up actually Magnus Helberg off of waivers in the interim for uh, Talbot there in Ottawa. And then for VGK, I come right back with Logan Thompson. I don't know what their schedule is or how that's working out, but I would have to come back uh, tonight in this game with Logan Thompson. Uh, best on best, I think, uh, would have to be the way I would go. Yeah, I'm I'm with you a thousand percent on that, Tony. Um, my prediction for the goalie rotation was the Tuesdays and Thursdays for basically uh, at least the first uh, 12 days of, look, look at the schedule right now, the first 12 days of November, the Tuesdays and Thursdays go to LT. So Washington's victory, of course, Ottawa tonight, next Tuesday, Toronto, next Thursday, Buffalo. And then the two Saturday games uh, go to Aiden Hill uh, this Saturday in Montreal. And then when we come back home after our five game roadie against St. Louis, um, you know, coming back first game off the road trip, a big Saturday night game. I could definitely see a good spot to start Aiden Hill over Logan Thompson, just maybe for a different look and a different uh, side of things. But definitely I think LT tonight is the way to go. Uh, we might have uh, inklings once we start getting some, uh, some tweets from the local Ottawa media in about the next, I don't know, maybe two, two and a half hours as to what the pregame lineup and skate's going to look like. And LT, I think will certainly be ready. Very solid season to date. And uh, whether it's LT or Aiden Hill, we're in a great spot right now. Um, the goaltending is in a very, very good spot. I say this and I you know, raise my eyebrow a little bit because obviously uh, Brassois will be uh, joining the team in the next three to five games, according to the, Henderson Silver Knight schedule. I say three to five because the Golden Knights could actually apply for uh, to have his conditioning extended for two more AHL level games. So um, interesting times ahead in the the net side of things. Tony could get a little dirty tonight. Uh, we know the uh, the past the past history of Brady Kachuk. He's got twelve points. I think I saw in fifteen penalty minutes. So he'll be raring to go in this game tonight. Ottawa is a team that started last season at three, nine and one. They're in the basement currently in the Atlantic division, but they already have four victories. They're four and five uh, so far. And I think a big difference maker will be when they have two goalies that they can rotate back and forth and Cam Talbot, I think will be an integral part of this team. And I think they're starting to get their chemistry together. Once again, I, I think that this could be a very intriguing matchup. Um, I see the bottom six as a key, and I hate to keep repeating myself with the, some of these games, but I like the third line of Ottawa a lot because they've got Tyler Mott, who was instrumental with the Rangers last season in the playoff run. Uh, they have Marcus Stelic and Matthew Joseph. A couple of nights ago when I watched that Tampa game, uh, he returned. He played for Tampa and then was back and forth here uh, with the Ottawa Senators. But Matthew Joseph... Chris, he had a breakaway goal. Uh, his he was that team was shorthanded in a five on three, and he just buzzed through everyone. And I think that this could come down again to the bottom six, particularly. I have to point to the third line tonight. Most games, Tony, not just Vegas withstanding, are always going to come down to the bottom six. Um, obviously, you're, there's going to be times your top six does what they do. Jack Eichel, obviously, is. Um, certainly showing us that but for the most part the bottom six is going to win or lose the games and I don't just necessarily mean by scoring big goals and it's nice when Will Carrier gets a game tying goal late in the third and I guess shout out to Cassidy for trusting the fourth line to go out there with you know seven or eight minutes left when they are trailing in a game we didn't see that much from uh DeBoer Gallant didn't mind rolling the fourth line late but we definitely didn't see that a lot from uh 
from DeBoer. Got some just funny uh, hits here right now. I was actually looking at um, Gary Lawless and, ja- and Jack Eichel had a sit down. And weird things seem to happen with this team in in Ottawa. Uh, Gallant was op- obviously fired there. And then the Jack Eichel news broke when they were in Ottawa. So they were <laughs> they were uh, they decided to mess around with um, poor uh, Ashley Weiss, uh, the ringside reporter, obviously. And hope you like Dallas, Ashley. Open up the jabs. Nice working with you. Good luck wherever you end up. And of course, they were just, you know, having some fun. So, you know, Ottawa is kind of that strange place for the VGK where you just don't necessarily know exactly how things are going to shake out in a funny way, of course. But yeah, the third line matchup is certainly going to be very important. And the third line is obviously where we're going to focus a lot of attention right now here in Las Vegas, right? We got to see um, how Howden, Amadio, and Kessel are going to tick. Um, you want offensive production out of that line. But you also need the defensive side to do their job. And that's where I, I'm not going to say Phil Kessel's liability. I'm not going to go that far. But that is something that you want to see how Kessel shakes out more in a defensive role. Because I don't know how often in his career he has been primarily a third line winger who's going to be relied upon to grind a little bit and chase down the other team's top two lines, especially when you're on the road and the home team has the opportunity to get last change and, you know, put their top two lines out there against our bottom two lines. So, you know, Phil Kessel's in a new place right now. I I feel good about Amadio and Howden grinding out uh, games, making it tough to play against, making players earn the ice against them. And Kessel has been noticeable on both sides of the ice. And hopefully that can continue. Maybe it's the long story longer of what I'm trying to say. The news fresh out of Ottawa this morning, Robin Leonard is returning. I'm just kidding. (laughs) That's a bad one. Uh, but Robin Leonard, uh, back on November the 1st of 2013, uh, set the team record with 53 saves. And this past weekend, Anton Forsberg tied that record. They're getting a lot of shots on net, and Forsberg has been a very busy goaltender. Uh, the Ottawa Senators, Chris, it's a team that's for sale. Major distraction. Here we go again. This league is absolutely rigged. Just kidding. Okay. But in any event, uh, they're, sa- they're saying now that Ryan Reynolds – Uh, The actor uh, is very, very interested in purchasing the team. And as many of you know, uh, Eugene Melnick, uh, the past owner, uh, passed away. His daughters, I think, are something like 19 and 22 years old. And, you know, hey, you know, maybe they've got that uh, fangirl in them for for Ryan Reynolds and they might sell the team to him. But they're going to be responsible for selling this franchise, which I think is kind of crazy. The value of the team. They say is anywhere between 600 million, 655 million is what they put on the market. Could go as high as 800 million, but pretty interesting there, right? In, uh, in Ottawa, a lot of things are happening. I want to ask you something else too. Uh, so Bruce Cassidy said that the ice in Washington, they go from one nation's capital to another, but he said that the ice the other night in Washington was heavy. Okay, what did he mean? So did they try to neutralize things there, the Capitals in Washington on their home ice? Did they maybe put some beer or whiskey into the ice? What did they do? Why was that ice so heavy? I wonder what he's alluding to when the ice is heavy, first of all. The the first thing I hear of that is the ice is a little bit tacky, maybe. Um, The best comparison I can offer right now, and I just got my skate sharpened yesterday when I was out there. I got them down to a quarter inch. Oh, my God. there's It's so weird, by the way. If any of my hockey people out there, I've never gone down to a quarter inch before. There's not very much tackiness out there, but I found myself able to accelerate a lot faster but when i'm turning you got to watch out it's uh it's like having slicks out there but another story for another time so when i hear heavy i feel like it's tacky though um my best comparison i can offer is when i skate at lvic out here in town the ice the this the surface below lvic is different than what's below city national and um lifeguard and probably even fiesta for that matter i don't know if it's a little thicker or not but i have a lot more grip when i am at lvic versus City National and Lifeguard, I don't have as much grip, but it's smoother at those facilities. And you see the players just moving a lot quicker. So I would assume maybe the ice was a little bit tacky. I don't specifically know what he's alluding to there. Um, You mentioned uh, 
the 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 youngins, if you will, selling a billion dollar franchise or whatever that number was that you put out there. And it brought me back to remember that terrible movie, Little Big League, where the kid like um the grandpa passes away, the Minnesota twins now are owned by like a seventh grader or something like that. And he decides he's gonna coach the team. And oh my God, just a so bad. It was it's a cute movie, folks, but it's you know, maybe maybe this is the NHL version of Little Big League. Maybe they can make a movie out of this. Speaking of tackiness, you're listening to Lockdown BGK. And when Let's we go. return, Let's like go. that, uh, is that a good segue? That's perfect. When we return, we'll, lock, uh, we'll be talking about uh, BGK's offense. It's starting to click, perhaps. Who knows? We'll talk about that next. We return Lockdown Golden Knights. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, the team matchups, the news, podcast, and in-depth analysis for each and every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for each and every sport that's out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including the National Hockey League, MLB with the World Series, and last night's no-hitter, combined no-hitter, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn a lot more. Bet online where the game starts. Welcome back from Las Vegas. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick. And thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. And Chris, we eclipsed 80,000 downloads since January 1. I like it to 100k. Let's get there, dude. The drive starts now. By the end of the week. By the end of the week. <laughs> By the end of the week, with all of my great tweets and all of my favorite fans out there adoring me and all that adoration, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. We had some pretty good. Are you going to use those? Are you saving some of those tweets from yesterday for for what the Friday? I saw you commenting. You got in, in the traffic <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, that oh, was uh, we we had some fun yesterday. We had some. We fun do yesterday. have fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so Mark Stone met with the media yesterday, Chris, uh, in Canada, and he mentioned one of VGK's biggest concerns right now is its offense. He talked about balance scoring. Uh, he talked about Jack Eichel getting into the groove. He said that the team is getting better. They're healthy right now, as we know. Knock on wood. And he said that the defense is good, the goaltending is good, but he said, he pointed out that the offense is behind. So I went back and looked at some stats from last season. Offensively, VGK averaged 3.20 goals per game. So far, 3.18. So yes, they are a little bit down. They're lagging a little bit. Why the concern? Why the concern with the offense? It's primarily the second period offense, I would have to guess. I'd have to imagine. That that that's actually a fair chirp right there about the second period. But um, I honestly, so a couple things. Um, I got some we're gonna talk about stats in a second, but um I think Mark Stone is radiating Bruce Cassidy. I think uh the honesty that Bruce Cassidy offers is moving its way through the locker room. And of course, after the coach, the captain is the most important person to hear how they feel, how our things are going. And if Mark Stone feels they're behind, they're behind. I mean, call it what it is. And it's a fair comment. There are times VGK has been struggling. Uh, we did talk about the power play and uh, not that it matters as much as on the scoring side, but the PK special teams have been a concern. And, you know, um, I think the team is holding itself to a very high standard right now. I think that's the biggest change that we have since Cassidy has taken over. I think the identity, right? What's the identity of the Golden Knights right now? And honestly, I think the identity is accountability. I think it's accountability starting from the coach. I think the coach is incredibly honest in everything he says, and that works its way through the locker room. And I think the team is being honest with themselves in every way that they evaluate their performance. And yes, they're nine and two right now. That's wonderful. But it only takes a three-game losing streak, and you're nine and five, and it can happen on the road. They're in a tough spot these next three games. I mean, the next four games are in a tough spot. It's Buffalo's uh, Stanley Cup Final Game Seven next Thursday when when Jack Eichel comes to town. You know, Alex Tuck uh, 
he doesn't have a grudge against VGK, but you know, Tuck wants to stick a two-year-old team. That's uh that's how you do it when you play against your friends. You want to beat him even even worse. Um, the most interesting stat that I found here, I just pulled up all the VGK offensive statistics. Our plus minus, I don't know if he was the leader last year, but Zach Whitecloud, he was a plus 21 in a very tough season. Plus 21. This season, Zach Whitecloud is actually a minus one, which ties with Ben Hutton, who only played one game with Zach Whitecloud, I believe, the opener, who are also a minus one. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if that means our third defensive pairing is taking more chances or if it's just the way Cassidy is matching them up against the other players, but it's not a concern by any means. Defensively, VGK has been wonderful, but I was surprised when I saw he was a minus one, but looking on the offensive side right now, Eichel 12 points, Stevenson, nine points, Petro, nine assists for Petro. That's remarkable. Um, I guess uh, if we're going to talk about defensive scoring, Eric Carlson is 15 points for the Sharks already this year. I was shocked when I saw that, but that said, he's probably a minus 27 already too. That's how it works up there. Uh, Marchie sitting on eight points. Your boy Carlson, four and four, four goals, four assists right now. Uh, Stone, three and five. I'm not concerned about that at all because Stone's doing a lot of things. And then Shay Theodore comes in with eight points. Riley Smith, seven. Nick Waugh off the contract sitting on five points. So, I mean, they're they're getting a balanced attack. It's not just Jack Eichel doing everything right now. March is so March, March. He hasn't scored in a while, but that's not an issue by any means as he was scoring. Uh, he was scoring basically in droves and now it's uh, kind of gone a little bit. Maybe since the misfits got back together, March, he stopped scoring, <laughs> but now Carlson's getting some goals. So, you know, I'm not concerned about the offense and necessarily what Mark Stone is saying right now. He's giving an honest assessment and, Listen, if they feel they're not there yet, it's going to be a great season if they improve just a little bit, Tony. Isn't it funny, though, how all of the players on this team suddenly are drinking that same truth serum that Cassidy's on? Because now, like, everyone's transparent. Everyone's honest. No one's holding back. Have you noticed that with the players and their assessment of this team this season? It's the truth serum. And they're laid back and they're pressers and things like that. It's not, it's not tense. I mean, I've only got to do the trip once, but you know, the vibe around the arena was pretty cool. Um, Just a, a small, I guess another small thing that I never pointed out when I did the, when I did have my credentials for the game a couple of weeks ago, I sat down, um, there was like a buffet area set up for people to um, enjoy before the game. And it was good. I went in there, paid a couple of bucks. It's, it's cheap. It's real, real, real cheap. You know, unfortunately uh, I got to pay for it, but that's okay. And I'm sitting down, I'm eating. I hear some people chatting in suits next to me. And there's McCrimmon literally like, I don't know, eight, 12 feet away from me, just shooting the breeze with, uh, with uh, everyone else. And he's working the room, right? He's talking not just to, you know, about hockey business, but he's just sitting down with other, um, he's sitting down with one of their social people, um, and just talking to me, I, I was hoping he was going to come and, you know, shoot the breeze with me for a second. But the point being is there is a culture and um, going back to this was a very fun moment for me. So the season two, they hold it, they hosted a night to remember. It was a VGK gala that was at the World Market Center. And I received an invite um, and it was just a really cool environment where the players were just walking around there's maybe 500 people in there every player was there and that's when me and a you know your boy carly had a few too many and i drank them under the table that night but before i got to that state tony i did actually have a moment to chat with george mcphee and i asked mcphee at the time when i had one of those weird careers on the strip when i used to work for a living um i asked him i said hey when you what, what just give me a good piece of life career advice give me something and it took him no more. And this is after we were talking about Vegas and he was talking to my wife about, um, about the schools and stuff. And, you know, cause she was a teacher at the time and all that. So it was, it was a real laid back situation. So I finally asked him and his answer was culture. You have to instill the right culture, you know, and everything will basically work its way from there. And that was something that I took with me as best I could when I was on the strip, uh, running, uh, my, 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 um, my poker rooms and things like that. So where I'm going with this is I do think the VGK culture top to bottom right now, more than ever is in a very good place from the players, from the coaches, from the GMs, from everyone that makes this team go. It is very positive. And that was the one thing that I witnessed the most on display when I was doing um, the, the media thing a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, VGK is in a good spot right now and being honest and transparent, not a bad thing. Truth serum. That's what we're going to say. Hey. Uh, the lines are the starting to get uh, they're starting to get some chemistry. 
Um, and, you know, Mark Stone pointed out yesterday that last season, you know, a lot of the lines did not get a chance to play together, you know, due to the injuries. So that's another point. But again, is this alarming? No, uh, that they're not scoring goals because they're winning. And do you feel as though I started to think about this a little bit more? You know, Bruce Cassidy's system is one of defense. And I had a feeling at the start of this season, Chris, that VGK would have to give up some of its offense to play a more structured defense. Do you agree? That's, no, that's totally fair. I was trying to pull up while we were going here, and of course didn't pop up. I was trying to see where VGK ranks overall in scoring right now. But yeah, I mean, you have to give up something to get something. No team, I don't care if it's the President's Trophy winning Tampa Bay Lightning or what the Avs did last year, there's always going to be a level of give and take. You can't have perfection in every single you know, category. So maybe the system that they are playing right now, trying to limit the chances. I mean, if you're trying to limit chances through the neutral zone, that also means you're not attacking as much as like the season one team was where, you know, Jar it felt like Gerard Golan at times had two forwards on the opposite blue line trying to stop that breakout from happening. And it did a lot. I mean, it really worked so well in season one. And I've never watched a team. I've never seen a team do what the 17, 18 Golden Knights did as far as forechecking goes and creating instant opportunities uh, breaking up the other team, breaking up the other team's breakout. That's a mouthful right there. Um, so that's not what Cassidy is doing though. Cassidy's team takes a little more of a reserved approach to basically not allowing that long stretch pass through the neutral zone to create an odd man rush. That means your defense is going to be back. That means your center might not be as far trying to disrupt. And, and same thing with the wingers. The center is going to be back around the red line trying to make sure that that stretch pass doesn't happen. So when you do those things, yes, your five on five scoring does have to suffer a little bit, which obviously means your overall scoring is suffering. And, you know, you look at teams that win the cup, it is with a solid defensive core. There's not a lot of teams, Tony, that are going to win every single game six to five and go on to win the cup like that. It's just not how it works, especially come playoff time. You know, a lot of two to one games, a lot of three to two games, a lot of one to nothing games, a lot of overtime games. So you have to give in order to get. I really do believe that it could come back to bite VGK. You're talking about defensemen. And again, I, I know we played a ton of minutes last year, but the minutes are going to accumulate for Petrangelo sooner yep. or later. Yep. And man, does he, he like he joins the rush, but he gets in so deep into the offense. And there were some odd man rushes that VGK got away with in the game against Washington the other night. I just don't know that he could get back continually defensively, um, especially since he's joining the rush. He's uh, below the goalie line at times. Um, you know, I think he's just pinching perhaps a little bit too much. What are your thoughts? Um, I mean, listen, you know, we, we, we've kind of hit this before with Petro and he's not 26 years old. He's not 24 years old. I think he's pushing 34 right now, if I'm not mistaken, right in that ballpark at least. And those minutes will add up. They will add up for anybody. That especially said, on I, heavy ice, especially on the heavy especially ice. Especially on the heavy ice. Yeah, that's the thing. When you, depending on the way you sharpen your skates, uh, the gentleman at Lifeguard, oh, he, he's passionate about about skate sharpening. Oh, you gotta, you have to convince him what you want. And by the time you're done talking to this guy, you don't know what you want. But I also mean that in a in a respective way because he knows more about it than you do, and you're gonna feel that by the time you're done talking to him. Um, so back to Petro. He hasn't slowed down yet, though. Um, I think back to Duncan Keith with the Chicago Blackhawks, and I think I've mentioned this before. Duncan Keith would log a million minutes a night, and he is just an absolute physical beast when it comes to health and the way he takes care of his body. But a concern as Duncan Keith's career progressed was him actually losing weights. And Duncan Keith is not a big person by any means, and Duncan Keith losing weight throughout the season – is a concern because of, you know, how hard he works and things like that. So his diet became, you know, a concern to keep him healthy throughout the year. And there were times uh, Chicago had to log his minutes and things like that. Going back to Petro, we haven't heard anything like that yet about him as far as him breaking down, experiencing a slowdown. But I do feel like Cassidy has a hold on this team, whereas, you know, if he feels something is happening, he'll shut him down for a game or two. I don't think... Cassidy would hold back in a moment to do something like that with Petro or any one of our players, Martinez, you know, it doesn't matter. 
I do think uh, Cassidy understands the long haul. And real fast here, you know, we're talking about overall scoring here. Boston's got 44 goals. The Sabres got 43 goals, but that's a bit diluted because they've had some big games recently. Oilers 41, Islanders 36, Devils 36. BGK comes in at 35 goals. So, I mean, BGK is sitting, you know, basically fifth or sixth in the league in overall scoring. There's not that big not of a concern, concern yet, Mark. So yeah. not that big of a concern, but we, we hear what you're saying. Okay, it's prediction time. Prediction time. I don't I don't believe that we'll have a very boring game tonight like the Washington game. And one of the reasons, Brady Kachuk, and I'm going to put the over <laughs> under at uh, three and a half minutes in the box tonight. I just think he goes wild. I know it's a good line. He Tony. really <laughs> does like to he really does like to rough up. He likes to play the role of ruffian versus VGK. We've seen this in the past. And this team's going to have some spark knowing that they could beat a team right now. That is one of the top contenders in the National Hockey League. I'm going to make it a four to three final. Maybe another OT game, maybe a shootout. What was your number? You say four to three? Four to three in favor of Ottawa. Uh, I'm going to go three to Ottawa. Sorry, folks. I'm going to say, but I'm going to say VGK has a solid game as far as like shooting goes. And I just feel like this is a game that Ottawa is going to steal. I think VGK will outshoot Ottawa like 42 to 28, something like that. It's a game VGK is going to feel good about, but they're going to come out and come out on the losing end of this one tonight, three to two. Yeah, for sure. Forsberg has faced a lot of shots, a lot of wear and tear. There could be a lot of open ice in this game tonight. I just don't think it's a good spot uh, for the VGK tonight with uh, you've got Ottawa coming off of those two road losses to Florida, to Tampa Bay. And again, back at home now where hopefully they feel, you know, for their good, uh, a lot more comfortable. VGK has so, got three big games, Montreal, Toronto, Buffalo. This is the, this is the trap. This is the trap game. Very well put. Coming up next, who's a contender, who's a pretender in the Honda Pacific Division. Back with more after this on Lockdown Golden Knights. Thanks for making Lockdown VGK your first listen today. Now for your second listen, make sure that you tune in and check out Game to Game NHL with our guy Chris Golick. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Lockdown Game to Game covers every game across the National Hockey League with local analysis like that from Chris on Locked On, of course, everywhere that you can follow it. Game to Game on Locked On NHL is available on the Odyssey app. It's available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You don't want to miss this old big head. I'm telling you, TMZ, I think that they, they zoomed in on my head like it was they covered my entire screen i was like, i know how the rest of the viewers feel tony <sighs> okay lots to think about here for uh after the first month of this season <laughs> after the first of the month of this season uh in the i still call i've got to call it the honda pacific division give them the corporate shout out i mean they didn't get a lot of play during the pandemic so i don't think they got all of those hits and impressions that they want so we'll give them impressions we'll give them impressions right here uh okay let's go from the bottom to the top contender or pretender i will play this game today Pretender. okay uh good (laughs) the canucks uh vancouver very tough spot they after the coaching change they had a great uh basically second or a a great two-thirds of the season last year under Boudreau. Not the case this year. All of a sudden, Boudreaux's on the hot seat. And, uh, yeah, Vancouver pretender moving forward. Vancouver, they've blown a lot of leads, right? You know, that's been the biggest issue so far this season. So you've got uh, the Canucks down in the basement. The Sharks. And it's not Eric their time Carlson, yet. It's not Eric their time Carlson yet. played. He played his worst game. He played his worst game against the Golden Knights. He got stuck on the ice for more than five minutes. That's fine. That's good. I mean, sharks are pretenders. He wasn't the best and, Carlson on the ice that night. What's that? Okay, he was not the best Carlson on the ice that night. We'll take it now. Sharks, yeah, they're it's not their time yet, but they are moving the right direction as far as acquiring talent, starting to shake shade, uh, get rid of some contracts, and they can find a way to you know move Eric Carlson this year. I think that's going to happen as well. We've got the Anaheim Ducks, uh, a team a little bit disappointing, I think, in the start of this season. Just seven points, three, six, and one. Through 10 games, we felt in our preview that the Ducks 
would be a team that is a year away. Yeah, and Jamie Drysdale went down against the VGK in the Nevada Day game, unfortunately. Looks like that might have been close to a season-ending injury that he just that he had. They're gonna the ducks are gonna be good, but it's just not their time yet. They're pretenders for this year and probably next year. But after that, uh, you know, just watch what the Ottawa Senators and Detroit Red Wings do. Same Cal Gary, Cal Gary is in fifth place in the uh, the Honda Pacific. Just eight games uh, played, though. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, why have they played uh, so few games so far? Because the schedule obviously favors VGK, and that's why they did that, Tony. I like where Cassidy called it the other night. He called it a scheduling quirk. No, it's not a quirk. The fix is in. This is Vegas. <laughs> I could read this from a mile away. Okay, the ice was heavy. We get it. Okay, we've got flames are flames are contenders. Eight games in. If you give them fourteen points, they're only a couple points behind us. So <laughs> Calgary will be there in the end. Shout out Daryl Sutter, best coach in the universe, in my opinion. <laughs> the LA Kings through twelve games, six and six, which they got off to a horrific start. But again, this is a team that is really good on the road. They're proving it again. The Kings are doing are on the path right now that I thought the VGK was going to be on. You got a lot of vets. They've been there before. They've done this many, many times. The Kings are going to be that team that's right around the bubble for a little bit. And then probably come sometime in February, they're going to turn it on. Uh, there's too much talent there. They made some good acquisitions. The goaltending is too good. Coaching McClellan, okay, fine. But, you know, point being is that's a team that will at least be there as far as the playoffs go. If we're going to say contender, pretender to win the division, it's pretender, but they will be a contender for probably that third playoff spot pretty comfortably come mid-March. I did see uh, one website predict that the Canucks would win the Pacific. Holy smokes. Okay, the Kraken. The Kraken, our team, we said could be in the middle of the pack, right? And that's where they're at right now. If the season ends today, they are a playoff team. I think they'd be a playoff team with 12 points, 5, 4, and 2. Uh, we thought that this could be an improved team. Are you surprised with their early start? No, I mean, we know they were going to be improved. We know they were going to be better. Um, I'll use our favorite word here in Southern Nevada, and that's sustainable. Is, um, you know, this type of output sustainable throughout the season for Seattle? Not yet, I don't think. Uh, Wright's had some healthy scratches once, uh, very notable when his grandparents were in town. So now you got some uh, some drama up there. So pretender for now, but again, one or two years, let's talk. I know you're stockpiling thoughts already for tomorrow's What the Friday, WTF. Uh, we've got the Oilers. Uh, the Oilers through 10 games are 7-3, and three, 14 points. And we knew that this team would be amongst the top three. No doubt. Connor McDavid is, you know, he gets a couple cups under him. He could go down as being on par or better than Wayne Gretzky. And I mean that sincerely to Wayne Gretzky as well as Connor McDavid. Obviously, Edmonton's going to be there in the end. Will the goaltending be there? We'll find out. Let me ask you this about the Golden Knights, who are now in first place at this juncture, playing 11 games, 18 total points. 35 goals for 19 goals against. So a difference of 16, which is a terrific sign. Uh, so is this a team that things might even out here for? It evens out for everybody, Tony, but really quickly, I feel the bar is now higher. And now instead of being a fringe playoff team, we are now a playoff, a, a division contending team. Thank everyone for tuning in. What the Friday is tomorrow, of course, we'll recap this game from a man, Chris Golick. We're running out of time, as you can tell. I'm Tony Cardasco from Las Vegas. We thank you all for tuning in to Locked On Golden Knights. I got five seconds left. If you want to get anything else? I'm kidding. Thank you.